Amen. I pray that it's been blessing your soul. Uh, my assignment, um, just as I have uh, explained, uh, is to show you the difference between praise and worship because, uh, like I, I say all the time, uh, everybody can praise God. But in order to truly worship God, you have to know who he is. And in order to know who he is, that means you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to begin to dig down deep into the word, find out uh, what God says, uh, find out what God likes, find out those things that please God. And when you begin to understand the raw essence of who God is, uh, it'll begin to usher you into worship. Uh, so I just thank God, you know, for, um, for this uh, series, and I pray that it's going to take your level of worship to the next level. Amen? How many of y'all been going through the fire? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've been going through the fire. Come on, let's keep it real. Amen. Some of y'all been going through the fire. Yes, yes. That's just God burning up those things, those impurities. Um, that's not like him uh, because sometimes in our life we think we have things together and we think that we're more mature than we are. But when God begins to turn up the heat, you'll begin to see those imperfections leak out. And sometimes they leak out on other people. And then that's when you realize, hey, I need to stay in this fire a little while longer till God gets through with me. Amen. All right. All right. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into the word of God. Uh, we are in a new sermon series uh, for Tuesday night. Uh, this is for Tuesday night only. Um, this is a new sermon series entitled I'm Working on My Walk. How many of y'all working on y'all walk? I can tell you're working on y'all walk because y'all here tonight when y'all could be watching, you know, anything, love and hip hop. Uh, oh, that's yesterday. How you know it's yesterday? <laughs> watching that ratchet TV. But uh, without further ado, we're going to go to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. That's where the text is coming from tonight. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. We're reading from the NASB. Uh, if you are have your electronic Bible and you want to follow with us, you follow through that. And it's also on the screen. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 through 18, it reads as this. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh sets its desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Jumping down to 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus mm -hmm. have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Amen, amen. I love it because here in the book of Galatians, uh, Paul is literally admonishing us as believers that we have to walk in the Spirit uh, so we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, when we walk in the Spirit, Paul begins to um, show some things that you can, uh, that comes out of the Spirit of God. He says, uh, but the from out of the spirit comes love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith. All of these attributes come from the spirit of God. So one way that you'll recognize that you're being led of the spirit, that you're walking in the spirit, that you're growing in the spirit of God is that you'll have these attributes uh, and they'll be visible uh, and flowing from your life. Um, so I love it because Paul is literally saying that uh, you can gauge your growth as a believer based on how the fruit or of the spirit flow freely from your life. And he says it like this. If you live by the spirit, you should also walk in the spirit. Um, and I love it because he's 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 joining these things together. He's saying, I don't want you to just um, live by the spirit, but I want it to be part of your walk. So as a believer, we have to make sure that our walk matches our lifestyle. Um, don't let your lifestyle uh, match your walk, but your, your walk should match your lifestyle. So as a believer, you got to be like Paul. You got to say, hey, I'm going to be one of these believers that flow in the spirit of God because I don't want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Uh, 
we're talking about growth. Uh, we had started this particular sermon series talking about change. Mm -hmm. Change would be the first step necessary in order to work on your walk. If you want to work on your walk, first and foremost, you have to have a desire to change. You got to stop making excuses, make the necessary adjustments, and start walking in your change. Uh, many people think that uh, change is something uh, we ask in the audience uh, what when, the fir when they heard change was the first thing that comes to mind. Somebody said that it was something that was difficult because sometimes change can be hard, uh -huh. but change is not impossible. Uh, all of us will experience change in our life. If you are a spirit-filled believer, if Christ lives on the inside of you, change is inevitable, inevitable for you. The process of your change, now that's on you. Because when the Spirit of God comes and lives on the inside of us, something in us doesn't want to stay the same. Mm -hmm. But that something in us that doesn't want to stay the same, now it varies based on what you desire to change in your life. Because the Word of God comes forth in the house of God each and every week. I was talking to Pastor Charles before we got here today, talking about the fact that all of us, the Word says that the seed is the word of God, mm. uh, and the sower sows the word, and we are the sowers in the Florida Christian Center. We sow the word each and every week. Mm. Where that seed falls in your heart is up to you. When you look at the parable of the sower, it talks about the different soils. That's the same thing within this room. If it has all these different sets of soil that the seed begin to fall on, mm. and that determines the growth of that seed. So you have to check your heart. Find out what's your heart condition. Is your heart conditioned for change? Mm. Is your heart conditioned for growth? Some of us can't grow because we have so much uh, bitterness, so much anger, so much mm. spite, so much uh, fear, so many things entangling the seed that the seed can't grow. Wow. Because the seed is being planted each and every week. If you sit in the house of God and you hear the word of God, it's up to you to allow that soil, that seed, to take root in your heart. Yeah. And I can see a seed being planted. Yeah, yeah. And how you treat that seed is how that seed is going to grow. Ooh. But it's up to you to treat the word of God that comes forth in the house. The word of God says some, 60, some 30, some 60, some 100. So that means it's going to vary uh -huh. on your change and on your growth. Some people take off like this and just go grab the word because it's not a matter of years. It's a matter of years. Oh, that's good. Good, so good stuff. You yield come on, your come heart on. To Christ, come on, come on. It doesn't matter if you've been saved 10, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. But if you have not yielded, yes, yes, life, yes, yes. You can be a 40 year old Christian as far as year wise, but still be a babe in Christ. Ooh, that's good stuff. Ooh, it's tight, but it's right. Uh, and, and, and when you were saying that, you know, the Lord began to uh, remind me of the fruit of the spirit uh, because he said we uh, from the fruit of the spirit would uh, from the spirit would flow love joy peace long suffering meekness gentleness all of that good stuff but what happens is when we receive uh, Jesus as Lord and Savior in our life he deposits uh, those attributes in our life in seed form get this get this in seed form so so when he gives you that that love seed he gives it to you um, it, in, in its minimized state. He gives the, the joy and the peace and the long suffering to you in its minimized state. And what happens is when the word of God comes forth in seed form, we have to make sure that our heart, our lifestyle, our, our spirit is conducive to where it can cultivate that seed and it begins to grow. What separates an immature saint from a mature saint is, is their level of cultivation of the seed. So, so, so this is what will happen. For someone that have not grown in the love of God, they may come into the house of God, see a person that they don't like, and start hating on them for no reason. Okay, let me give you another example, because I guess y'all, um, it ain't that many people that's hating. Okay, for someone that's immature in the things of God, that just came out of the world, he may have had a problem with sleeping around. But then 10 years down the road, when he should be more mature as a saint, 
if he finds himself still sleeping around, it's a sign that he did not grow temperance up in his life. What is temperance? Self-control. So these things that God gives us, the fruit, the attributes, are in seed form. Your level of maturity is tied to how much you allow the word of God to cultivate what he's doing in your life. So many people hear the word, but when you hear the word alone, it won't grow you. It's when you begin to do the word that matures you. So, so we're just letting you know that just sitting under this word, yeah, it might stimulate some things. It might motivate you sometimes. It might, you know, cause you to want to do better. But you have to begin to take this word home. You have to lock it in your spirit and, be, and begin to become intentional with how you let the, the fruit of the spirit develop from your life. So when somebody cuts you with what they say, instead of you cussing them out, you need to bless them out. That's the difference between an immature saint and a mature saint that's grown up in the fruit of the spirit. Amen. We're going to bless some folks. Amen. No more cussing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 13. Uh, it says, mm -hmm. until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, mm -hmm. to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All of us have a goal in this room. Each and every one of us, if we are believers in Christ, our goal is to should be to become mature grown-ups in the things of God. We should be ready to eat some steak, yeah. some filet mignon, Chateaubriand. some Chateaubriand. Yeah. Y'all know what that Chateaubriand is. Amen. I know what it was. Well, Y'all yeah, better get out. <laughs> Y'all better get out. We were in Las yeah. Vegas, and um, they had that as an option. I'm like, yeah. We, we were in the what um that? that that what it was that needle the stratosphere uh, stratosphere yeah. and and it was one of those yeah, uh, top notch the, yeah, yeah restaurants that restaurants. yeah you, you can, can see everything that's going on Las Vegas while you yeah eat. The restaurant is rotating and we were kids we were walking in there like we had a bunch of money we were kids <laughs> what, what we was kids what was twenty something well I guess that's a kid. to me that's a kid yeah yeah, yeah we were like twenty something you know 20, about twenty six yeah yeah. But but the waiter the waiter came out um, um, and we saw Chateau Brion on the menu and then um, because Sorbet. yeah because my wife ain't never been nowhere she didn't know what it was. <laughs> she ain't never been nowhere but to the stove. Straight out of the east side, oh, yeah. But but yeah yeah we had we had to, uh, we were able to get some Chateau Brion. You know God God allowed us to step our level of living up. And some ostrich. Yeah, we tried some ostrich. I didn't try it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was I'm good. not that was experimental good. with my food. Yeah, I yeah. need the basic food groups. Don't come with me with no ostriches. <laughs> but some Chateau Brion was on that menu, and mm -hmm. we should be at that level yeah. to where we're eating sound food. Mm. Um, babes in Christ like the little small, short, the little chicken nuggets. Hot, and dog. hot dogs. And the, you know the kids' menu. Them, them pizza, pizza, pizza uh, and the pizza pizza chicken fingers and fries yeah. or spaghetti, depending on what restaurant you're in. But we're trying to get you all to a level in Christ where you're able to secure a sound word. You can eat that strong meat, and you yeah. can take the word of God and allow it to build you up. We need that protein in our life in order to grow in Christ. We can't continue to live off the little small watered-down meals, the little quick instant. Ooh, I got to shout real quick. All of that is good for its season. There are seasonal messages that we have to have in our life. Mm -hmm. But Tuesday night messages are for those who want to eat on the word. I'm talking about where you take the word of God, you can apply it to your life and not just sit here and say, okay, that's good. Uh, okay, okay, but I want to jump and shout. Jumping and shouting is not going to keep you. Because when you get off the ground, you're going to need some words. Yes, yes, You're going to need yes. something to sustain you. You're going to need the application of God's word to sustain you. You can't take those jumping, shouting messages, and I love them too. They, you know, I giggle and I laugh, and I be like, oh, yeah. But when it comes to God's word, I want something good. I want something that I can take, I can cut it, come on, I can come on. slice it yeah, up, yeah, yeah. and begin to chew on that yes, thing yeah, and yes. let it build me up and, in my spirit. And I remember Pastor Blackman preaching a message. I don't remember the title of it, but he said you have to cut it up. 
you have to rightly divide the word of truth. In other words, it may come as strong meat to you. In other words, the word that we're preaching, it might bust you upside the head. But you have to be willing to take it uh, and, and begin to dissect it and cut it up to where it's more palatable to you. Although it's strong at first, the more you begin to chew on it, the stronger your teeth is strengthened. Your gums begin to be strengthened. And then now you're able to um, to, to, to digest the strong word. So, so it, it gets you past, you know, just a praise message into more of a, a, a well-balanced meal. You have to have a well-balanced meal to be a mature saint. The ones that eat the hot dogs and the french fries and, the, and, and, and yeah, 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 and eat all that. Those are the ones that don't have the word of God deep down in their spirit. And when the sun comes up, it burns them up. And then you don't see them anymore. But the ones that are strong and, and able to take that strong meat, the scripture says that he'll begin to give you 30, 60, and 100 fold return. Amen. So we're talking about growth. And we're going to make this more interactive. So we want to mm -hmm. pose the question as we did on last week. When you hear the word growth, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Anybody? When you or hear the word growth, raise your hand. What's the first thing that come to mind? All right, we got two over here. All right, they're going to microphone. Let's. Who's working I wish, this side? Yeah, who's working this side? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let, let's let's make it fast. Let's, let's wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is growth. Amen. 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 I love it. Why good. Good. The What's next? What's next? Increase. Increase. Oh yes, increase is growth. Yeah. All right. What's next? Got one over in the corner. Wave. Uh, she waved your hand in the air, and what? When I think of growth, I think about maturity in Christ. Amen. 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 Maturity in Christ is growth. A process. A process. Yes, it is. Okay, it is a process. Absolutely. Amen. Any others? Okay, we have Progress. two. Expanding in the word. Expanding in the word. Amen. Expanding is growth. Word. Yes, amen. So you're able to uh, see growth take place. Amen. Uh, when I think of growth, I think of something that's necessary. Mm, growth is necessary. Absolutely. And mm. when, I, when you say growth is necessary, uh, you have to think about it like this. If you had a child and that child never grew, we would call that child, we would say that that child had some form of deformity or some wow. form of inadequacy. Wow. There would be some form of something going on in their body. So when we think about the body of Christ or the things of God, if we're not growing, could it be that we have some type of growth malfunction going on in our spirit? So, yeah, growth is necessary. Any others? When I think about growth, I think about big. It's hard to take down something that's big. Mm. Mm, amen. Big. Yes, yes. Amen. One more up here. Growth is be big. The last one. Something that's also inevitable, like mm. either way, growing in bad things or growing in good things. Mm, is inevitable. Wow, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. You can't Amen. Grow in bad yeah. things and yeah. grow in good yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and one of, um, because he said that, one of the things that come to mind is, um, uh, Bishop said, um, you have to uh, make sure the right thing in your life is growing. Because all growth isn't good. Because some forms of growth can be a tumor. And some people can have a tumor. They might look, it might look big on the outside, but it's some type of abnormality, you know, going on, you know, under, you know, that level of growth. So we have to make sure that, you know, we're growing in the things of God, not just growing and being a carnal Christian, because a carnal Christian is re really someone that's growing with a tumor. On the outside, they're professing Christ, but deep down on the inside, um, they have all kind of ungodly things going on in their life, and their lifestyle is not lining up with the will of God, you know, and, and, and it's not lining up to what the word says a true believer is. Many people say, Lord, Lord, but the scripture says when he look at their heart, their heart is far 
from me. So we as believers, we have to make sure that our growth is conducive in the things of God. Uh, we can't see growth taking place, but growth can be measured. Mm -hmm. Growth is something that we can't see with our physical eyes. When you see a newborn baby and that baby is born, the next day you wake up, that baby is a little bit bigger. Uh, and then two months later down the line, you see that baby, that baby is a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. All of those things, growth is taking place just like a fruit that is on a tree. Uh, we know that tree, the tree is bearing the fruit. We can't actually see it with our physical eyes that that growth is taking place, but growth is happening. Uh, but there are ways that we can measure our growth, and growth is a process. But let's define growth, and we'll start talking a little bit more about it. Amen. Growth defined is the process of growing. Full development, maturity, and increase as in size, number, value, and strength. Um, I want to pull out uh, full development. Um, this is something that we have to do as believers. We have to be fully developed. Uh, one of the things that come to mind is the different stages of life. Uh, when a child uh, starts off, they grow, they start off in their infant stage, and then um, they go from uh, infancy uh, into uh, the adolescent stage. Say again? Toddler, excuse me, thank you. Infancy, toddler, adolescent, and then they go over into becoming um, an adult. Um, so what we as believers have to make sure is that our growth is intentional enough so we don't start off as infants and stay adolescents for the duration of our, um, or in our walk as a believer. And so many saints just think because they're saved, you know, that's the end of it. But when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning. You're now a babe in Christ. And, and you have to begin to become intentional as far as what your growth is concerned. The way we gauge children is we'll put them in kindergarten. And then they have to matriculate from kindergarten over through middle school then high school, then college, and so forth. But if they are 10 years old, still in kindergarten, something is wrong. But it happens in the body of Christ all the time. People might be saved 10, 15, 20 years, but still they beating on their wife. Still they're cussing people out. Still they're, they're, they're popping mollies and, 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 and doing all kind of ungodly things. Why? Because just because you've grown in age does not mean that you have matured in the things of God. But God is looking for us to be fully developed in who he is. We got to grow up. Uh, five signs that you are growing properly. Anybody want to grow properly? Amen. Anybody want to grow properly? Okay, y'all was quiet. I don't know. I'm making Amen. sure. Maybe, maybe it might Amen. be. Uh, Maybe no, they it, don't. I don't know. No, no, no. But I, I think this is one of those things where, you know, they have to kind of take inventory. Okay. They have to do a self-evaluation um, because we've been taught that in order to get an amen, mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you give an amen when you already know something. Yeah. But when you're still processing some stuff, you might be like, ooh, Y'all still ouch. chewing. Okay. Keep yeah, chewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chewing yeah. is good. Yeah. Keep on chewing. Uh, ways that you can uh, know that you're growing properly. Number one, mm -hmm. you have an understanding of the foundational things concerning Christ. A person that uh, is maturing in the things of God, mm -hmm. you have a handle on the basic things concerning Christ. You know what salvation is. You know for sure that you've been born again. Mm -hmm. You say for real. You don't have anybody to tell you that you saved. You know that you know that you know down in your Noah that you are born again. So you have a handle on those kinds of things. You have a handle on uh, knowing that uh, God is who he is. Uh, he saved you. Uh, now that you're saved, you understand that I have some things that I have to do. Change has to take place in my uh -huh. life. And after I change, I got to start growing. So those are the things that are foundational things. You know about baptism. You know about the spirit of God. You know how to worship. You know how to praise. Yeah. You know that you come to church because those are some foundational things. 
So a person that is growing properly has a handle on the foundational things concerning Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the word concerning this. Hebrews 6 and 1. Hebrews 6 and 1. It says this. So we should be finished with the beginning lessons about Christ. We should not have to keep going back to where we started. We began our new life by turning away from the evil we did in the past and by believing in God. That's when we were taught about baptisms, laying hands on people, the resurrection of those who have died, and the final judgment. Now we need to go forward to more mature teaching. This is literally saying that as a believer, after you've gone through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade, you should not have to return back to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. What is that? You're repeating and trying to relearn what has already been taught. What happens there? When a person has to relearn and, and have to be retaught, it's a sign that they have not fully comprehended what has been said. And if they haven't fully comprehended what has been said, there's no way that they can apply what they have been taught to their life. So your level of maturity is tied to how you comprehend the things of God, how you begin to embrace the things of God. And after it begins to make sense to you, you then, based on the word, should be able to walk it out into more mature teaching. If I have to preach a certain way to stir your spirit all the time, it's a sign that you haven't matured in that area. But the more mature saints don't have to be stirred in spirit. They come with their spirit already stirred. So that's what this is, is literally saying. Don't go back to those elementary things. Don't go back to coloring in your coloring book when you have been taught how to write in the line. But so many people, instead of them doing what they know to do that's right, they return back to the elementary things of God. But God is saying to us today, we got to grow up. We can't go back to the things that we used to do. Uh, if you are a person who were delivered, uh, who was delivered from tardiness or lateness, and then now you're backtracking to being late, mm -hmm. then that means that you're going back to some foundational things that have already been taught to you in your life, and it's time to grow up in that area. Uh, there are some things that we should be already ready to overcome. If you had a struggle with making your uh, way to the house of the Lord, and now you find yourself, and it, it, it gets easy to not make it to the house of God because you'll miss one Sunday or you'll miss a Tuesday, and then it starts getting comfortable mm -hmm. at the house, you know, and then you miss one and you're like, well, I could miss another one. Or if you've gotten to a place where you're working in ministry and because it's not your week to work in that particular ministry, you don't come that week. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Mm. You know, just, oh, I ain't on duty. I ain't on post today or whatever duty I'm today. Off. I'm off, so I'm, I, I don't have to be on time. The devil is a liar. If you are matured in the things of God, does it does not matter where you have duty, whether yes. it's your time to pray, yes. whether it's your time to serve at a first touch, whether it's your time. <laughs> I run out of breath. Let me stop fussing. Okay. <laughs> now the Lord say, hush. Amen. Stop fussing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But we should be ready to go on into some more two things. Amen. 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 Going Amen. on. Number two, you will begin teaching what you know Ooh. and you'll be practicing yeah it. this is good this is good this so is how you can you're get mature, if gauge, you can growth. gauge your growth yes. if you are teaching the word of god and you're practicing the word of god you're showing that you're matured in the things of god because now you have the word down in your heart and you don't want to keep it to yourself Ooh. You're telling your coworkers. Yeah. You're telling your friends. You're yeah. telling your family. Yeah. Uh, you're coming to uh, pass. I want to teach at the uh, coffin conversation. You are distributing the word of Ooh. God. That's how you know that you're growing. Amen. That's good. Uh, how many teachers do we have in here? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
six. What? Seven? Okay, okay. Now we got a lot of teachers Not in there. teachers. No. I'm saying just teachers, teachers, well, period. Well, right? um, well, I was really talking about school teachers. Oh, school teachers. School teachers. Okay. School. But, but the point I'm trying to make is in order for you to be, I guess, certified to teach, you had to do what? You had to go to some classes. I'm sure you had to go go to college. You had your instructor that um, taught you what you needed to do, and then they certified you. And when they certified you, you were able to take uh, your credentials uh, to the school board, Duval County. And when school, uh, Duval County saw that you had those credentials to qualify you to teach, those that have been trained to teach, those that have been taught to teach, now you're it put, been put in a position to equip others. The point I'm trying to make is you will begin to find the more mature saints that's in the house of the Lord when they grow up to a point to where what's been taught to them, they're now put in a position to where they can distribute to others. So instead of you coming to your classroom to receive teachings with your kids, God have elevated you to where you're now able to convey what you need to to the next to the next generation or group. God is literally saying that he's waiting for some of you all to grow up. He's ready for you all to step into the area of teaching people because in order for this next generation to grow up, you got to grow up yourself. So will you begin to teach what you know? Will you begin to practice what you know? I'll say it like this. Whatever level you're on, you're on in your Christianity, you should be able to teach from that level. You might not know everything that the Bible says, but you probably know more than what a whole lot of people in this world know. So whatever level you're on, begin to pour out to others. Begin to give to others. When you begin to do that, God will begin to stir your spirit. He'll begin to encourage you. Why? Because you've now taken the focus off of yourself and put it on somebody else. Hebrews 5, uh, 12 through 14 says this. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, mm. who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Yes. We have to begin to take the word of God and share it to others. We can't go back to the elementary things. We can't step off of the things that we know to do. We can't back off of the things of God saying, okay, well, this is a comfortable place. I've done all I can do. I'm done teaching. I'm ready to just kind of sit down and settle down now. The devil is a liar. God has <laughs> placed something on the inside of you yes. that he wants to get out. And he don't want you backtracking to the small areas of God and just trying to just sit around and just say hallelujah and go home to your pretty house. But he wants us to take the word of God teach it to somebody else not going back to the elementary things that mm -hmm. we used to do but going back into maturity eating that solid food taking it and breaking it down so somebody else can eat it you know there is one thing like with a baby if one of the things that you'll know uh, that will challenge you in growth is when you're ministering to somebody else when you're soul winning it causes you to be mature yes, because yeah. you can't live any kind of way when you're winning people to Christ because they'll be like, how you going to tell me one thing and you're doing <laughs> another? Yeah. So soul winning keeps you on fire. Mm. So I encourage each and every one of you to take the opportunity to find somebody that you can minister to, somebody that you can pour the word of God into because when you're pouring the word out, then that means you got to take the word and eat it for yourself Amen. because you can't give somebody what you don't have. So that's why I say if you're mature, you're teaching the word of God, not only are you teaching it, you're practicing it, and you're living it out so other people can see. Amen. And number three, you will begin to look like Christ. Uh, this is something that Christ did. Um, uh, Christ was a teacher. He taught in the synagogues. Uh, the scripture says that he taught 
so well uh, and with uh, such power that people became mad and upset and angry with him. Uh, so, so Jesus was literally one of those teachers. Now get this. Jesus was one of those ones that he taught some hookers. He taught some tax collectors, some lawyers, the, the, yeah, yeah, the um, Pharisees. He taught the Sadducees. He taught, um, he taught the crazy ones, the ones that was demon-possessed. He talked to those dumb ones. He went to the school of the deaf and the dumb. Taught them the things of God. He taught the ones that, although they act like they wanted the word, but they only wanted the fishes and the loaves. What's the point that I'm trying to make? God wants you to grow up so you can be a teacher just like him. We need some people that's out on Main Street. We need some people out on Lim Turner. We need some people out on Blue Cross, City Bank, wherever you work, that's willing to teach the word of God to people that have not heard the gospel. One of the things that come to mind is the, the woman at the well. We got to find some women at the well. The ones that, that, that got, five got, got five husbands and the one that she yeah, she living with ain't, ain't even the right one. Do we have those people in our life that we're able to share the gospel with? Or are we scared to offend them? We got to be willing to tell them that there's a way. We got to tell them about, oh, Lord, I'm going into my, my, my son the mess. We got to tell them about the living water. We got to tell them. And the only way that you can tell somebody is for you to grow up and become a teacher. And when you become a teacher, you'll begin to look just like Christ. Christ exemplified patience. Uh, he exemplified uh, care and concern. Mm -hmm. He was compassionate. He was a person that was concerned about other people. Mm -hmm. uh, if your focus is only on us four and no more, then we got to mature in the things of God so we can look like Christ. Uh, Christ was concerned about uh, the lost, the least, and the left. Yes, he yes. didn't want anybody to be uh, without. He was always in the face of people trying to show them that he loved them and that the kingdom was coming. So if we want to look like Christ, then we got to start displaying the fruit of the spirit. We got to start displaying love, displaying patience, yes. displaying peace. We have to be teachers. We not only have to be teachers, but we got to be uh, people who are able to discern what is good and what is evil. How do you sharpen your gift of discernment? By staying in the word of God, staying in prayer. So that's how you begin to look like Jesus. Uh, number four, you won't be talked out of what you believe. Oh, this is good. A person that is matured or is growing properly in the things of God won't let anybody come and talk them out of what they know about Jesus. Uh, we have a great falling away in the body of Christ because people are being tempted by the things that somebody is telling them or teaching them because they're not secured in the things of God. But a person who is matured and a person who knows who they are in Christ Jesus, nobody can come with any false doctrine and take you out of the house of God because you know that you know that Christ is real. So if you are assured in the things of God, no matter how many years you've been saved, if it could be a week ago, but if you know in your heart that it's only one way to get to Jesus, and that's through his, the blood, that's through uh, confessing that he is Christ Jesus and the Lord of all, then you have to be assured in that and walk the thing out. Don't let anybody talk you out of what you believe because they're coming. They're on your job. They're on the street corner mm -hmm. saying that, oh, well, you in this tribe, and if the people in the church ain't teaching you right, and all of these different things. He but Hebrew all, Israelite. All of these things, yeah. they're teaching. But the focus is not on Christ Jesus. You got to live by the commandment. Hebrew Israelites, I stress that. How many of y'all living by the commandment? Okay. Okay. How many of y'all uh, are from the the lost tribe of Israel. Raise your hand. Come on, come on. Okay, okay. Have y'all heard that? All right, okay, okay. Um, let, let, me, let me give you another one. Uh, say, that, say that again. How many of y'all don't eat pork because of 
the commandment. These, these are some things. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take it a step deeper. <laughs> no, that, no that, that, that's a, those ones that don't want to come on 4th of July. How many don't, how many don't yeah. celebrate the, the holidays? Anybody don't celebrate Christmas? It's pagan. Easter, pagan. Anybody don't celebrate the 4th? That's a pagan holiday. Don't you dare. Mother's Day, y'all going to hell. Father's Day, y'all going to yep, hell. That's what they say. And I'm like, I can't honor my husband as a father. <laughs> as that's going to send me to hell. As a matter of fact, we'll take it a step deeper. How many going to go to hell because they sin? Raise your hand. If you're going to go to hell because of your sin. Okay, all right. Well, we got some smart students. Okay. Well, we've been teaching something. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to go to hell because of your sin because Christ has already paid the price for your sin. The reason why people go to hell is for rejecting Jesus. When you reject him as being your Lord and Savior, uh, you're doomed for hell because you don't have anyone to be the perfect substitute for you. Um, what's some other... Uh, strange doctrine that's that's out there. Taking your shoes off before you come into church. How many of y'all heard that? If you okay. don't, if you're not, if, if you don't get baptized and come out the water speaking in tongues, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. Say that uh, you you said something. Okay, so we have to have Christ in our name, our church name, for us. <laughs> To go to heaven. All of these things come from the world to talk us out of what we believe. Um, there's another one. Why would you serve that white God? Yeah, I guess I, I didn't hear something. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all Christians serve a white God. How are y'all Christians when the word Christian isn't found in the Bible? All of these things come from the world to try to pull us away from the things that we believe. If you don't take a stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. I think that's why God said we have to make sure our calling and our election is sure. And that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. My question is, where was the Hebrew Israelites a hundred years ago? Why is it just now coming up on the scene? Why are they now standing on the corner? Because if it came from Christ, it would already be here. It would not be anything that's just, that's new. Yeah. The lost books of God. I don't need no lost books. If it's lost, it needs to stay lost. I read the, the Holy Writ, the Bible. Yeah. Don't be talked out of what you believe. And number five, the way you'll know you've grown and matured is you will speak the language of love. You will speak the language of love. The love, the agape love of God. Yes, uh, my wife said that's what separates us from other ministries. We believe that we're a church of love. We believe that because God is love, we should walk in the agape love of God, the unconditional love of God, the non-judgmental love of God, where we can look our brothers and sisters in the eye, despite what they may have done, despite what they might be going through, look them in the eyes and say, hey, you know what? I love you. We have to speak that language. Get this. 
even when we mad at each other, even when we don't like each other right now, even when we bump heads, even when our personalities don't match, even when, you know, we don't click all of a sudden, we have to continue to speak the language of love. Why? Because God is Scripture says it like this. Love is patient. Yes. Love is kind. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's what? It's, kind. it's kind, but it was it's patient. That means I'm willing to wait with my love that I have for you, not based on how you treated me, but this thing is based on how I'm going to treat you. Love is kind. I'm giving you kindness. It's not based on what you give me. I'm just giving it back to you. Why? Because that's the same thing that God gave me. Loving kindness. Tender mercies. It's not puffed up. I'm not full of pride. Love does this. When you come at me a certain way, I'm willing to take all that you give me. Even if I know I'm right, I'm going to be wrong just so I can give you the love that I have for you. Then it also says love bears, I like this word, love endures all things. Don't you know it's going to be the love of God to keep your marriage together? Don't you know it's the love of God that's going to keep us together as a church? Don't you know it's the love of God that keeps us moving, living, and thriving as believers of God? We have to speak the language of love. We have to live the language of love. We literally have to be that language of love. Ephesians 4, uh, 13 through 16, it reads as this. This work must continue until we all are joined together in what we believe and in what we know about the Son of God. Our goal is to become like a full-grown man to look just like Christ yes. and have all his perfection. Then we will no longer be like babes. Mm. We will not be people who are always changing like a ship that the waves carry mm. one way and then another. We will not be influenced by every new teaching we hear from the people who are trying to deceive us. Those who make clever plans and use kind, every kind of trick to fool others into following the wrong way. No, we will speak the truth with love. We will grow to be like Christ in every way. He is the head and the whole body depends on him. All the parts of the body are joined and held together with each part doing its own work. This calls the whole body to grow and to be stronger in love. We got to be stronger in love. We got to come out and start looking like Jesus. We can't yes. let anybody talk us out of what we know about Christ. We can't be tossed to and fro by every wave of doctrine mm -hmm. because they're coming. That's yep. what the word says. So don't be surprised when you hear a new doctrine or, or y'all don't know the truth and all of these new <laughs> truths that the enemy is saying that we're missing out on. Yeah. But we know the truth of God's word. And if it's taking somebody away from the love of Christ and it's separation involved, mm -hmm. then you got to know it's not God because wow. God is love. Wow. He is a God of love yes. and he's not going to exclude one color over the other. Come on. That's good. That's good. So when you got a, a solid foundation and you know God's word, you won't be tossed to and fro. And then you won't be moved by the things that happen in life and you'll continue on in the things of God, walking it out in love. So if we want to look like Jesus, we got to start maturing and growing in the things of God. We got to work on our walk. Anybody working on their walk? Amen. Let's stand on our feet and we're going to close with Amen. prayer. I'm working on my walk. I want my walk to please God. I want my walk to be something that I can leave as a legacy. I want my walk to be mirrored by other people because they say, well, if she can do it, then I can do it. 
I want to walk in love every single day, even when my flesh say, oh, no, you better not. But I'm going to do it anyways. So we got to be matured in the things of God. We can't be tossed back and forth. We got to stand firm on God's word. Father God, I thank you right now for the people of God. I thank you for your word, God, that says that uh, we are to grow up and begin to speak the truth of God in love. Lord God, that the word of God begins to take root in our heart. Work on our ground, God. Work on our heart. Anything that takes the seed and tries to shift it from one place to the other so that it can't grow, I pray, God, that you will begin to break up those things so that the word of God can take root in our heart and we can begin to live as full, mature believers in Christ Jesus. Father God, I thank you.